In this tutorial I'll make what they call a triptych. It dates back to the 13th century, late 14th, early 14th century, where church paintings were placed on a panel with doors which was open and closed so they could protect the painting and sometimes a wood carving. So they had uh, hinges on, on the difference on the other side of the of the three panels. But in modern day art they use uh, equal equal uh, panels. So in this tutorial we'll make this cryptid out of one image. Close this one off. The very first thing we need to do is put in an, an alpha channel. So we right click the image in the layered channel and add an alpha channel. That give me the, that'll give me transparency. Now we need to know the size of our image to be able to divide it up into three. Well there's our size up the top there. It's 2,273 2, pixels wide. Now they're pixels, so we need to divide that by three. I go to programs and use the calculator within our in our windows. So now I need to type in 2272 and divide it by 3 which equals 757. Well I won't worry about the decimal points, there's far too many. So it's 757 is the size I need. Now I go to uh, view and I click on show the grid. Now it's a funny way it works, it shows all the grid in a very small format so you've got to go to image and go and, and configure the grid they think they should put them both together now the width I type in 757 and no need to worry about the height if you want to you can click in there as well and there's my grid I've got that 7x75 seven seven grid now I go and add a, uh, a new layer I have a new layer now that layer is on the top now the grid doesn't affect the image at all and it uh, copies itself or it's laying on top there so it's it's usable in the in the uh, it's usable in the new layer I go to my select tool rectangle I go to my rectangular select tool and I use the cursor to give me some idea of the width I want to make it so I just drag it around there and make it a that width now I'll go to select and invert my selection now the rectangular select tool is still chosen and I click add to the selection. That's that little icon there which will add to the selections. Now I need to go outside the inner selection as you can see with the cursor there. Now I'll just drag and drag it down to the bottom and you notice down on the bottom left hand corner of the screen it tells me it's a 42 uh, rectangular I've got there so I'll let it go. Now I need to center it, so I just move it over, and I don't know whether you can see the little tiny cross there. I'll move it down, and you can see it in the in the lake area. But I need to move it up because I need it in that area up the top there. That's centered that selection. I let go, move over to this side, and go outside the uh, the inner border of the image, drag it down, and match the the width by 42, and let it go. Now I need to center that one. I'll click in there, you notice the little crosshairs will give me where the center is. It's spot on. Okay. But now I go to my bucket fill tool, click on there and fill that with black all around the edges. That's filled my borders with black. Now I go up to select and select none. I turn that selection off. I swing my color to white. I'm still in the bucket fill tool and fill each panel with white. Now I don't need the grid anymore so I go to view and switch that grid off. Now I go to edit and I cut that out. I've cut it out. I swing my colors back to black. I'll, I'll be using black later on. Now I go to uh, layer and add a layer mask. Once again, white full opacity and add. Now what I cut out is on the clipboard. So I go and paste it back in. And it pastes, pastes the layer as a, or the pasted image as a floating selection or pasted layer. And you can anchor it 
I need to anchor it into the layer mask so I use this little anchor icon here and it anchors it into the mask. Now I right click my image on the top and I ask it to apply the, the uh, layer mask and that applies it to the image. Now we've got our layer mask on the image and now I right click the top layer or the image once again and I add an alpha channel and that selects all around the edges of that of our three panels. Now I go to, to edit and now I stroke. I'm going to stroke a border around all those uh, three panels. Now I know the, the size of my image is reasonably large and six pixels is far too small so I'll bump that right up to about 15 pixels. Now it's going to stroke it with a line which is a line around all those um, selected panels and I click on stroke now it's stroked them all around there. Now I, I go to uh, my selection and invert the selection once again. Let's put it on the outside once again. Now I swing my colour back to white and you can fill this with the background with any other colour. I wanted to choose white in this case so I choose white. I could use the um, I could have used the patterns and put a bit of wood grain around there, whatever you like. And of course when you do the wood grain you need to tell it on the fill with this uh, pattern fill here. But in this case I filled it with the foreground colour which was white. I'll swing that back to black. Now I have that. Now I go to back to my selection and I invert the selection again. And that puts it around the panels. Now I go back to filters, light and shadow and add a drop shadow. Now the the script is loaded down the bottom and I click on it and bring it up the top. Now once again I know the image is reasonably large and those panels are large as well so I need to bump this well up to about 20 and same of the Y offset as well and leave the rest as the default which is the colour and the, uh, the opacity and click OK that's added my drop shadow which which makes it look like a bit more third dimensional. I'll go to select and turn off those selections. Go to the top top layer, right click and flatten image. That brings them all down to one. And there's my script uh, tripped it. So I just hit the uh, the tab key on the keyboard. So that's it. You've got it um, that's your tripped it in, in GIMP. It's very easy to do. If uh, if you find the instructions on the YouTube a little bit hard to follow. Right click my uh, channel at the top there and in, in the uh, my channel in the top right hand corner there's a link to a web page where you will get all this information in a PDF format. So thank you for watching and rate the video.